What's up, dude? You already know. <laughs> Luigi's here. <laughs> Welcome to Luigi's Wild Mustang Garage where I have built an amazing car. A 65 Fastback 2 plus 2, 4 speed, factory AC. We bought it, it was a beautiful car. I had to make it and put my stink on it from Luigi's Wild Mustang Garage because that's what we do, brother. Get that! Uh, we're restoring a 65 Mustang Fastback 2 Plus 2 K code. It's going to be a collaboration of many things. First, we're going to strip down the, the car to the bone. We're going to put it on the rotisserie and we're going to make sure everything is correct on the car. This car would be worth restoring if we had the original K code engine in it. We have a 302 that came out of a 2008. So because the fact that we don't have the original engine, we're gonna actually modify the car. We're gonna take it to a different rendition. Uh, we're thinking about either doing a Hertz rental, or with GT350, or GT500, or Eleanor. But we're gonna restore it, not to its original uh, beauty, but we're gonna build it to be something that's gonna look really nice at the end. car on the internet and I was basically looking for a fastback. It was one car that has eluded me all my life. Ever since when I was 16, 17 years old, the best car to have was a fastback. It's all about your inner feelings and how you feel about yourself towards a car when you build it. It's all about you. It's not what you're going to build. It's what, you, what your brain and your heart and your mind, how you want to build a car. feeling funny this morning. I got on my motorcycle, 10 minutes after I was riding, I'm like, I feel free again. <laughs> I love it. I don't care how bad I feel. When I get on my motorcycle, man, everything changes. Well, I'm in a bad mood, having a bad day. Just get on the bike, man. You stop feeling the breeze blow through your ear. Ain't nothing like it. tag everything. Well, it's imperative, that way the, the nuts and bolts are significant to certain spec areas of the cars. Different nuts go in different areas. And uh, you have to bag and tag them from the area as you go along. You don't just keep on doing nuts and bolts. You gotta have your bags and tag them. Otherwise, you're gonna get messed up when you go to put the car back together. Certain bolts go in certain areas for specific reasons. Like on these nuts right here that go on the fenders. They're a star washer, and the star washer locks into the panel, so it keeps the panel tight and the bolt never comes loose. They're specifically designed for the areas that they come out of. I wouldn't really need to back tag the bolt, but you put them all in a box. I'll close my eyes and reach my hand inside there, and I can pull off any bolt, and I can tell you right where it goes. <laughs>
the original instruction sheet that was uh, stuck to it in the uh, factory. This is all factory. This has never been painted. This is all factory. You can tell that nothing's ever been touched here whatsoever. And that's an awesome find. Even got some yeah. it, and this is all factory too, you know. This car is one of the most factory cars I have. Here's what I know. This fender on this side was never taken off because 90% of the time when somebody replaces a fender on this car or it wasn't an accident and I still can't see no vision of an accident, but the little tricks like this, you see this little rubber gasket? When you took the fender off, it would have fell to the ground and nobody would have bothered to put it back on. When we put the fender on, you don't really need that there, but that keeps the body panel, instead of being metal against metal, and if the bolt loosens up, you'll hear rattling every time you go over railroad tracks or bumps or anything. So this cushions it, and it helps, and it also acts as a spacer. It pushes the fender out, so it meets the body line to the door. Well, it, because this is a, a, a factory paint job, this is number two paint job, this is only twice this car has been painted. And wh whoever painted the car before did a real good job on painting the car. It may not be laser straight, but that was because that was what happened in the factory. You know, there's always some malfunction, different indifferences in your body panels, in your body lines, in your gaps. From any car you get, you know, from back in the day at the Mustangs. But because of the fact that the paint job itself ain't got no blisters, no body filler showing through, no rust showing through, you can actually use this paint job to block the car to make it perfect. You don't have to sand all this paint off. If you do a good paint job, you can paint right over this because there's nothing wrong with the underneath of it. There's no rust on this car. There's no body rust at all. The only rust you see in this car is them corners that slowly will disappear and turn black because we put that acid on it. Pulling the fan off. Give us more room to go forward. trannies are catching on the floorboard. Let's stop for one minute, make sure everything's disconnected. Nothing's catching, Nothing. check everything around, yeah. look to see where this is at, that, and the yeah. Y is. Everything. Okay, cool, we look good. All right, all systems go. I'll pop it up over. Here we go, all right, we'll go.
Okay, what we're gonna do here is we're taking out the front seats because we're gonna actually change the rug and we've got a couple of interior parts that need to be pulled out and replaced and some of them need to be painted. So what we're gonna do is before we take the door off, I wanna loosen up all the bolts to the seats because I have to have another guy here ready with me to hold the door. It's gonna take two people to pull the door. So while I'm waiting, I'm gonna go ahead and pull off these here seat bolts. That, that's where my excitement is today, is I wanna be able to see the bottom of this car sideways. Looks to me like somebody had added this here in. It's cut right here, and it's cut right here, and it's cut right here. I'm gonna have to do some research. I'm not gonna pull this rug out today until I find out exactly what's going on with this and what does this implicate, that it's an aftermarket or just a factory uh, way of putting the rug together. I don't believe so that it's this is factory. So. Well, I'm seeing rips here and I shouldn't see that. It's like somebody cut the rug to make it fit, to come straight up from being flat to coming up straight up the, the part of the uh, back kick panel. What's that telling you? What did somebody do to you? Well, I, I believe that this this rug was replaced at one time or another. And the fact that they if they did replace it, it, it was a fairly decent rug replacement because it has the placement of the rubber mats up here front from the, the brake and clutch pedal and gas pedal so that nothing wears into the rug and this plastic saves that. I'm actually going to pull this back seat. Alright, what I want to explain to you today is these are the, this is the original door tag from the factory. It explains the body style, the color of the car, the trim package that it came with, the axle, the place, the, the place of build, and the uh, transmission. And then above here in little tiny, tiny numbers is the uh, serial numbers to the car. But having said that, let me take you to the serial numbers that are in front of the car. Okay, as I said and I showed you the factory tag on the door, that's the first thing, say if you get pulled over by a car, that's the first thing he's going to want to look at. He's looking to find out if the car's hot or not. And then if there's anything funny about that, he'll lift up the car. And this is the next thing he's going to want to look at. He wants to look to see if these numbers match the numbers on the door tag, which is called the buck tag. And the one, two, three, four, fifth letter on this car is A, because this car's a Keiko. Oh yeah. Okay, now let's go over the other side here, because I found some other numbers. These set of numbers here are hidden. The, the fender hides these. On this set of numbers over here, they're not hidden. These ones are revealed to the public and the people that buy the cars to see and know that they match the door tag on the car. And, and only a true Mustang enthusiast would know about these hidden numbers here. And uh, we revealed them yesterday with the wire brush and they, they jive with that. Then after you left here earlier yesterday, I went ahead and looked over here on the side here and I found some other numbers. Now I feel stupid, but guess what? People all make mistakes, what so keeps up real, man. Here's where there's some more numbers I didn't know, know anything about, and we're gonna reveal them together here.
So now, I'll, are, are we only double checking, but we're triple checking, because like I said, we found some new numbers right here. Look at that, there they are. Okay, all four numbers match. You see these yellow numbers? It looks like some kid walked up to it with a crayon. Well, that's not what it is. This signifies that this is a factory car, and this is signature from when the car's going down the, the line in the factory. If there's a specific item he had to put on the car, that was the mark that he made to signify to the next person down the, down the aisle that that part was put on, or the oil was put in the tranny, or the oil was put in the rear end. Okay, here we found some more numbers. And not a whole lot of people, like I said, you would think that some kid come up with a crayon and, and mopped it up. That's not what it is. These were put on in the factory and the assembly line. These cars are built rolling one to two miles an hour all the way through the factory. And if there was something that I had to do to this brake, as soon as I was done, I put my number on there. That signifies to the next person down the road that the brakes or the, the fluid or the shock or something you put on. And each one of these numbers signify that. And you'll find these all over the car. And when you find something like this and you still got the reveal of the numbers, you know that this car is totally factory. It's never been messed with, never been in an accident. It's never been painted. They never took the undercoat off. It, it's just, it's one of the most valuable things in my heart that makes me love this car. Because it took me a little while to figure out why all these numbers and I did the research. The real true Mustang enthusiast will not want to do anything to the numbers. Do not cover them up. Do not wipe them. Do not touch them with your finger. You don't want none of that to disappear. That's one of the most valuable things about this car is all of these numbers that were put on 50 some odd years ago in the factory. Now that the demo's done, it's time to start the bodywork, part two. The bodywork is what makes the car look nice. Ha, ha, ha.